build a family. Um, I'm going to use a microphone because, as you can tell, my accent's a little bit different, so it might be a little bit hard to understand me. So I'll also try and speak slowly because I, when I get really excited, I just kind of, uh, and then it ends and people are like, what just happened? Uh, so hopefully that is what you experience uh, today, not just from um, this session, but each of our prophets and uh, evangelists and apostles speaking is what just happened. So yesterday, uh, Scott, my husband over there, and I went to the beautiful Victoria Museum and we saw the Tasmanian tigers. Quick aside, I didn't realize Tasmanian devils are quite aggressive. Uh, so I went to a zoo and I love animals and I'm also a little bit dangerous as a person. So I realized if I balanced my stomach on the edge of the fence, I could reach down into the enclosure. And so it was at the Taroga Zoo. Taronga Zoo. So I balanced on the edge and I went right down and this little this little cute thing was like ooh, 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 ooh. and Scott, who's never laid a hand on me in his life, was like ooh, ooh, and I like, hit my arm out of the enclosure and he's like, That would have bit you. But I was gonna look so excited. It was just <laughs> so I, I haven't been allowed back. Um, so that's fine. But I went to the Tasmanian um, tiger exhibit at the Queen Victoria Museum just down the road. Uh, and I just, it was so sad to see this beautiful animal just gone. Uh, it was a bit disturbing to see all the stuffed taxidermied uh, animals and things in jars. And I thought, these beautiful specimens no longer alive. We can see them, and there is some beauty there, but the full life is gone. Uh, and as I looked at the Tasmanian tiger um, information and read that the uh, Aboriginal people here in Tasmania kept the ecosystem flourishing through the burning of fires in the brush. And it meant that as uh, these fires ripped through and controlled, it transformed the environment to refresh and refresh each season. And so when the uh, colonists arrived, within 30 years, that burning and refreshing and renewal had stopped. And within that time, the stewardship of land had turned to ownership had to to control, not of the Aboriginal people still in that stewardship mindset, but the colonists coming over and putting a price tag on the heads of the tigers. And I just thought, isn't that sad, that when the fire stops falling, the renewal stops coming. When the fire stops burning, the ecosystem falls into disarray in the same manner. I see the Holy Spirit, when we don't call down that fire to rain on us, the burning, the pain, we embrace that, don't we? Uh, It's hard, it's painful, but that's where the renewal comes. Otherwise, the ecosystem crashes. And I just thought the Tasmanian tiger for me today, that that Victoria uh, exhibit, wow, it was heavy in my spirit that I don't want to be a thing of uh, beauty or renown or whatever or uh, Rosie did a good thing this one time, but the power of God is gone from me, that actually it must be the life of the spirit within me, fully alive. And that is painful. And that means, you know, you see some of the Tasmanian tigers, they had chunks out of them. And one of them had a leg missing. And I was like, that's us. Do you know what I mean? Like, if we get stuffed now, if you are uh, frozen at that experience when you were 17 or 18 of the Holy Spirit, yeah, what a beautiful specimen you'll be, but there's no life there. And so we have to dare to be vulnerable. (sighs) It's hard. So I'm um, going to read a poem of mine. Don't worry, it's not like a... I hope it's not a bit. Is Ponzi a rude word here? I don't, okay. I don't want it to be like a little bit flash. It's not. Um, so forgive me if I've already insulted. <laughs> um, so I am a prophet and a poet, and I love poetry, uh, but I do spoken word, which is different from, uh, I'd say, normal poetry, because spoken word means I don't have to rhyme or make sense. And I, I love that for us. Does anyone else like not making sense? If you do love to, uh, that's also good. So uh, this is a poem called uh, Holy Wolverine. Does anyone else uh, like, or re- does, hands up, do you know who Wolverine is? Look, I'm seeing a couple of recognitions. Thanks, worship team. Um, so this is a poem about some of that revelation and revolution of the Holy Spirit within us, if we dare to be vulnerable. Um, Kim, I'm going to get you to, actually, no, in my mind it was Scott. Scott, could you stand up here for a second? Can you stand there facing me? Okay. Keep your hands in your pockets just like that. Yeah. Catch this. Hands in your pockets. This is what's going to happen if we don't have our hearts open today. 
uh, the Holy Spirit wants to encounter you, wants to encounter you, Scott, this is not a rebuke, thank you for being my person, sit down. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. Just let's have open hearts for this. So let's try something together. If you can, let's try clicking. If that's hard, oh, it's quite hard for me. Also, Launceston is a hard word for me to say. Launceston, have I said it right? Lonnie, got it. Okay, so clicking. If you can't click, try, uh, try just tapping on your knee or just a smile also works. So when um, you hear something in this poem and you feel you're like, oh my goodness, that hit me, feel free to click. Let's try that again. In spoken word world, uh, that is a way to affirm. In te reo Māori, the language uh, of New Zealand and my family, the word is tau topo. Let's try that. Tau topo. Beautiful. And it means to affirm, uplift, kind of uh, come alongside me, yes, I agree. You can also do the little knee thing. That's also good. Or smile. Or just look away. Also works. If it gets a lot, we're also fine with that. Kiwis be like. I've heard that uh, New Zealand's a lot like Tasmania, and I love it. Tasmania's a bit of my soul sister. Kiwis be like blood, sweat, and tears. I walked 20 miles barefoot uphill to my school, and I was carrying the horse. <laughs> Jesus be like <laughs> blood, water, labor. I walked with my cross on my back up that hill of skulls. Blood, water, and labor, I gave you birth. You are my children. I gave you birth. Take a breath. Take a breath with me. Hatch your breath. Come alive by the Holy Spirit. Grasp that power and breathe. God, your promise is a crazy, tenuous thing. It's like a cobweb floating, it seems. It's whispering, transparent, and yet it's the rumbling of the mountain rages. I love you, you stranger, and you're no stranger to me. How can a father give birth? How can a tomb give life? How can a death be living hope? We are made of the same stuff, you and I. We are ashes to ashes, dust to dust, but heavenly to heavenly. It's DNA, Christ within us, reworking the very bones within us. It's holy adamantium. We are wolverine. But instead of claws, it's grace. Instead of fangs, it's life. Instead of death or threats, it's a promise of hope. A life beyond the grave. Resurrection, because the lifeboat is within us. And the plane crashes, your life jacket isn't under your seat, it's under your rib cage. Christ the one whom we find life in. Holy Spirit, the one we find our breath in. Father, whom we find our hope in. So, as your dark tomb grinds its teeth at you, as your deathly hallows and shallow fears roam, heckling like jackals and raising their hackles, remind yourself that the rocks cry out. Am I right? The rocks cry out, and the stone that rolled away, it did too. And we must sing praises. That Christ doesn't just bind up bruises and grazes, but he raises the dead, Amen. the dead, to life. But wait, there's more. You respond now. It's not just a promise for when you stop breathing. It's for the breath you draw right now. Let's breathe. forevermore. Kia ora. My name, my full name is Rosemary Margaret Vink, was my maiden name. Uh, I read something really interesting that said when you're signing up to forms, and it says as a security question, what is your mother's maiden name? It's actually kind of sad because that is one of the only things that will be erased in your family history that no one else will really know your own mother's maiden name, that for women is if you do change your name, that there becomes something that is lost that only you know or call to mind. In a similar fashion, there are parts of our spirits and souls and stories and testimonies and the things prophesied over us or given to us through the power of the Holy Spirit that sometimes can be erased by an unkind word or them not coming to pass in season or us losing faith or losing sight or getting busy or getting bored. 
And I just really get the sense that it's time for us to reclaim those lost names and visions back to ourselves. That it doesn't become the super secret security question because it's so obscure. But God's saying that name, that word, that thing given to you, that thing you hope is spoken over you will come back to pass and will become your name right now. Mm. Beloved, given hope to, given birth to, for the right now. And I want to circle back to that idea of ownership versus stewardship. When we own something, when we take it and claim it for ourselves, we can get quite casual about it. We can uh, chuck it in a cupboard, we can forget about it, and we can not use it. If you rent a car, oh, nightmare. I lost the keys to my rental. I'm never going to forget that. <laughs> and not this time, another time. When you borrow something beautiful and precious from a friend, when you are given something for a time, what do you do with it? Take care of it. It's in your mind. It's precious. And so in the same manner, we are stewarding the gifts that we've been given today, that we've been given in the past. If we've dropped them, if there's like cracks or like rips in it, we can actually address that. God's not out here being like, oh, I wish we should have. It's again a refreshing right now today, which I love for us. So what I'm going to get us to do is Kim, Scott and Belle, could you invite, actually, could you please uh, take these pads and pens and pass them out, pens, P-E-N, uh, to each person. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to do a really simple connection exercise because I'd like us to see if we can discover some of these words, these prophecies, these ideas that we've been given in the past, unearthed now. So don't worry, it's not going to be a um, deep brain exercise. It's actually going to be a deep heart exercise. And spoken word is a way to, as I said, bypass some of the laws and the rules that we do when we're writing and actually get to the stuff. I'm seeing, I love this. Some people are, I'm ready, I'm ready. Other people are, I'm not so sure, but I'll try it. Uh, so we're going to actually get into the heart space, the liminal. I love that. Let's see where we can find the door. You can also, if you've got a pen or paper you want to write on already, you're welcome to do that. And if you prefer on your phone, if you're a bit of a whip at typing out on your phone, welcome to use your phone or device either. Also, if this morning's cold has made your um, joints a bit sore, or it's a bit hard to write, feel free to just sit and listen and let it wash over you and answer in your own minds. However you want to connect with this is good. Um, also, a quick fun fact, so my friend Belle, we were talking about the reviews at a hotel she's been staying at, uh, and we read them over dinner last night for a bit of a laugh, but when she went to the, the shower this morning to open like the door to go in, there was the dusting of crime scene fingerprints on the back of the door. She survived. Praise the Lord, she survived. So I just love that. It's kind of like we spoke it into there, this worst possible thing. And the best. All right, so with your paper and your pen, if you've got something to write, um, or your phone, just so it's easy, let's get into this. So I'm going um, to give you some really simple prompts to begin with, and a couple of words, uh, like a word limit to finish, just as a way of shaping and creating a new space for us to engage. So I'm just going to pray. Oh, not just, I will pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you speak every language and more. Yeah, we don't need to understand all of your love to know how you make us feel and the things you bring comfort and peace and guidance into. We pray especially for the restoration of name in this space, the restoration of vision, that your words are every person has a part, a place to play in this. Together, you see us and you need us and you love us and you want us and we give you glory because you are beautiful. You are worthy of worship. You are above all, in all and through all. So all for this, today we pray. Amen. Your first line, I'd like you to write, In the silence I hear you say. In the silence I hear you say. 
and you've got three or five words to finish that. In the silence, I hear you say. Don't overthink it, just see what comes out. Three or five words to finish. The next line, I'm scared you'll, you will. I'm scared you'll. And you've got four words to finish that. Actually, three or four. I'm scared you'll, you will. Three or four words. Your next line, please. That's you. That's not in it. But <laughs> please. <laughs> and you've got three words to finish that. Please. Three words. Your second to last line. Thank you. Four. And then you've got 14 words to finish this. Wild. Thank you for 14 words. It's your second to last line. Don't worry, you're so close. Thank you for. Try your best. If you feel like you've run out of words, you do you. <laughs> 14 words. Thank you for. Your final line is, my name is, finish that, let's do one word, my name is, got one word to finish, the focus of that sentence is whoever you want, my name is, one word. Now don't worry um, that if if you think you've done it wrong, we haven't got it. The only way, I sometimes joke, and the one time I didn't, it happened. I said the only way to do it wrong is to just write constant swear words. Uh, and the one time I didn't say that, a guy came up and just read constant swear words to me. So do not worry about you having uh, not made it right. This is a way for us to express a deep truth in our heart. Belinda, you are banned from sharing. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we're going to have a couple of um, people, as you would like to, Come and share what you've written. If uh, getting to the front is hard and you'd like to share, please signal me and I'll bring the microphone over to you. In fact, yep, I'll just, let's equalize it. Anyone who'd like to share, stay in your seat, just hand your, um, this, into the sky. Put your hand up and I'll bring the microphone to you. So I'd love to hear. And if there's something that happens as we share in the space, we create something, a vulnerability in the room. I see this thing.
In the silence, I hear you say, you are my child. I'm scared that that you'll be disappointed in me. Please give me hope. Thank you for your love that shows me the way to follow you and help others too. My name is Aomi. In the silence I hear you say you are good. I'm scared you'll find all my faults. Please know I'm here. Thank you for the joy of living, the grace you've given, and the hope you freely give. My name is Chosen. silence I hear you say, it's okay, listen to your heart. I'm scared you'll never forgive me, please stay with me. Thank you for being with me, forgiving my sins and guiding me through everything. My name is Anne Marie. In the silence I hear you say, be still and know that I am God. I'm scared that you'll stop communicating with me. Please stay with me. Thank you for continuing to show me the reality of your existence and that of the spiritual world. My name is Peter. In the silence I hear you say, I am here. I'm scared you'll see parts of me that are unlovable. Please remain with me. Thank you for carrying me when I can't carry myself and loving me endlessly without judgment. As my name is, Beloved. In silence, I hear you say, you are not alone. I'm scared you will not approve of me. Please hear my cry slash prayer. Thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace, and for transforming me. My name is Chosen. In the silence, I hear you say you are my child. Uh, I'm scared. No, I'm not. Please keep me close. Thank you all you have for all you have done and keep doing. My name is yours. Let's have two more. In the silence, I hear you say, Princess. Pearl, chosen. I'm scared you'll see all of me. Please hold me close. Thank you for finding me in the darkness, loving me when I can't, and giving me big dreams. My name is Princess. In the silence, I hear you say, chosen for this time. I'm scared you will ask me to be bold. Please continue to empower me. Thank you for the constant indwelling spirit that guides me. My name. So over lunch or at any point in time, I invite and urge you to share what you've written if you really um, just feel that within your spirit that you'd love to have someone hear it, or I'd love to hear it as well. Um, I'm always around today. Uh, Let's pray. Holy Spirit. The lover keeps coming through. She and he was seen by you and loved. 
anyway and always. So pray off that word fruitlessly. Um, many just feeling like they're in this space and they're just not sure that they've labored for a long time or they've toiled or it feels token and they've, they're longing to see the fruit of your spirit. We break that off because we know you are good and you are fresh and you are fruitful and that the tree produces good fruit. And we thank you for these fears acknowledged both verbally and in our mental processing today. Uh, and we rebuke the spirit that would say we are not welcome, chosen, or loved, or forgiven, that we're still in that place of sinfulness, where we know that your blood washes away all sin. In the same manner that uh, Val had those weird, um, the results or the uh, evidence of a crime scene, we know that your blood washes away the crimes of the past, and says, come and be renewed. And so we choose in this space to acknowledge you, place you in the center of our thoughts and our heart and our worship as we enter into this next like, stage of the encounter with these prophets and evangelists and poets together, that we are needed because you love us. We are one. Amen. Oh, friends, will you please just thank Rosie, show your appreciation. She has a wonderful and unique gift. God uses her prophetically. And actually, you know what? She's kind of an apostle in a different way because the Lord takes her to new places and establishes new things in her ministry and through her. And that's very much an apostolic thing. So just a different way to perhaps the way we might think about it. So Rosie, thank you. Thank you for answering the call to come to Australia. Rosie is part of the national executive team. She is our secretary for spiritual life in the Salvation Army across Australia. And the Lord is using her mightily with her beautiful gift. If you would like to learn more about the spoken word, if you would like to learn more about moving in this type of gift, then Rosie will be doing a workshop later on this afternoon and you'll have opportunity to um, spend some more time with Rosie and with Scott as well. Rosie, we honour you. We thank you for what you've shared. And uh, yeah, we just pray God's blessing upon you. Everybody stand up.